Yesterday, I finished editing a video critiquing Miss Marvel's second episode and sent it out for the world to see. Today, I watched episode three and, well, I may have some corrections to make. Hey everyone, I'm RV Rocks, and Miss Marvel has shocked me. Because while I did praise certain aspects of the first few episodes, I had a lot of negative things to say about the entire experience of Miss Marvel. And now that I've seen episode three, I need to walk some of that back. Episodes one and two were a lot of buildup, asking questions about Kamala's powers and setting up Kamala's family and friends, who I assumed would be key players in the future. But episode three is almost entirely climax of those two initial focuses, delivering, in my opinion, satisfying conclusions towards both the superhero stuff and Kamala's family life while setting up the next arc of the series. As usual, I have a lot to say about all the different superhero stuff, so let's start off by discussing Kamala's family in this episode. And as you might have expected based off the last few videos of me discussing this, I love it. Perhaps it's because I can relate immensely to the whole giant family gathering and celebration angle that they go with with these scenes, but all of this hits very well for me. I like seeing everyone. I like seeing them all dressed up. Nakia is beginning to resemble her comic book self a bit more. Zoe isn't even in this episode, so I have no reason to complain about her. Hell, even Bruno in live action is actually starting to win me over. I like how in the MCU, he has a little more agency as a guy in the chair for Kamala's superhero business. Business. And honestly, his biggest win over Comic Bruno for me is getting rid of his doofy ass comic hairstyle. In fact, speaking of Bruno, another big change that I actually really like is that Bruno is implied to have made her costume in this iteration of the character. In the original comic, her getting the costume isn't played like a big moment, she just kinda makes it. And just like the other MCU shows, I bet she'll only put it on in the final episode, but I really like this whole it takes a village approach to Kamala's superhero origin. I think it plays well with her intrinsic connection to Jersey City. Spider-Man is to New York what Miss Marvel is to Jersey. Bruno makes the costume and is basically Kamala's Wade, Nakia finds out about Kamala's secret identity way earlier, and Sheikh Abdullah even gets the classic, good isn't a thing you are, it's a thing you do. Which, while not a direct adaptation of their conversation in the comics, serves just about as nice of a purpose in the grand scheme of things, even if I do really love the original scene. See, even episode Episode 3 has me praising changes from the comics. However, I'm not gonna be nearly as nice about the superpower side of things. Changing her origin story is something we all knew was gonna happen, but I don't love what they did here. Using clandestine and the djinn as a substitute for the Inhumans and the Inhuman Supremacists is an inspired choice, if for no other reason than just reminding people of clandestine, but the idea of Kamala being a djinn rubs me the wrong way. Kamala being an Inhuman did have a little bit to do with her heritage, yeah, but tying in her powers with her culture feels a little tone deaf to me. Not to mention tying this whole plotline in with the Ten Rings because they're Asian? Okay. Especially since none of this justifies the power change yet. Why didn't the bangle just make her stretchy? I think I will always be angry about that. Moving alongside from that, the episode really shines in the big climax, the attack on Amir and Taisha's wedding. And I haven't mentioned it up until this point, but I love Amir's casting. I had never heard of Cigar Shake before this, but he really embodies everything I love about this character in the comics. And let me tell you, seeing this guy in action, I'm very glad he's been given a decently prominent role, even if I would have liked just a little more time with him before we did the whole wedding plotline. At this point in the comics, he's already had a pretty big character defining moment that we didn't get in the show, but I guess I can't have my cake and eat it too. This wedding houses basically every single character we have met in the show up until this point, and I loved everything here. The interactions were fun, Brown Jovi is comedy gold, the dancing, while probably filler in the grand scheme, was undeniably fun to watch, I was just so happy to be in this space, and of course, the conflict was nothing to scoff at either. Miss Marvel has very much been a show following two worlds, the superhero cosmic stuff and Kamala's family, and anytime a show does a narrative structure like this, you just know that there will be a crossing of the two worlds. And in Miss Marvel, that cross happens in episode 3, when the wedding gets crashed by the clandestine. Ready to use Kamala's power to transfer themselves home, and for the first time in the series, there was an action scene I was 
was properly invested in. It wasn't perfect. I still don't quite understand what the Jin's powers actually are. Kamala can avoid conflict so easily, it feels like she can basically just teleport. And the ultimate follow-up with the family felt a bit clumsy. But those are all ultimately small gripes in contrast to what I thought was a fantastic sequence in the grand scheme of things. Watching Kamala finally get a proper fight scene, all set to living on a prayer as a callback to last episode's Bon Jovi joke, was just certifiably epic. Also, a quick side note, because I don't know when else in the video I will get a chance to say this. I like MCU Kamran. I enjoy that he's a little more sympathetic, unlike comic Kamran, who kind of goes really evil really fast the moment Kamala disagrees with him. It's refreshing, and that's kind of what I have to say about this episode as a whole. I still have my gripes, I still don't know if I love the show, but this episode was refreshing. Coming from someone who definitely has a large bias and goes into this show more or less looking to be mad about comic changes, the fact that the only thing I have from this episode to be angry about is the same thing I was angry about back in April, I would say that's a good thing. Will they continue this positive streak as the show moves into Karachi? Probably not, because the whole culture powers thing will almost certainly be the focus, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see in episode 4. And if you want to hear my opinions on episode 4, then why don't you subscribe to RV Rocks, ring the bell, like this video, and comment your thoughts on Miss Marvel this week. From what I can tell, I am in the minority opinion with a lot of the things about this show, so please, I encourage any talking from anyone. Come meet me in the comments or on Twitter at RV of Rocks. But before you do any of that, I have been RV Rocks, and thank you so much for watching. See ya!